use the second derivative test to classify all extrema for the following function. So the first thing we need to do here is find and simplify the first order partials. Well, actually, we're going to need the second order partials too, so might as well find them all. So we'll find all partial derivatives. So finding the partial derivative of the surface with respect to x, we have 4x cubed minus 4. And we could factor out a common 4. So I have 4 multiplied by x cubed minus 1. And then we have the partial derivative, the first order partial with respect to y. And I have 4 times y cubed minus 32y, or, well, 32. And we can factor out a common 4 here. So we have 4 multiplied by y cubed minus 8. So here are our first order partials, in which we need now to find our second order partials. And so let's give ourselves a little bit more room. So from the partial derivative of the surface with respect to x, we have the second partial of x with respect to x which is 12x squared. We also have the partial derivative of x with respect to y, which is 0. And then moving from the partial derivative of f with respect to y, we can have two cases. We have the partial derivative of y with respect to x, which is equal to 0. So you know that's a great sign. And then last but not least, we have the partial derivative of y with respect to y which leave us with 12y squared. And so these are our second order partials, which we will need for our second derivative test. So we are now ready to find the critical points. Those potential extrema. And to do this, we are going to solve the system of equations created by setting the first order partials equal to zero, and we solve for potential critical points, or potential extrema, ordered pairs x, y. So I have 4 x cubed minus 1 is equal to zero, and then we also have 4 times y cubed minus 8 is equal to zero. So here's our system of equations, and we can simplify this by dividing both sides by 4, so equation 1 becomes x cubed minus 1 is equal to 0. Equation 2 is y cubed minus 8 is equal to, my goodness, is equal to 0. So at this point, you want to pick your favorite equation to get started. Right, they'll both work. And in this case, it's going to be easy enough to solve for either one. So... Just to switch it up here, I'm going to start by solving the partial derivative of y set equal to 0. So I have y cubed minus 8 is equal to 0, and so we have y is 2. All right, y cubed equals 8, and then we take the cube root of both sides, giving us y is equal to 2. So we're now going to take this, and we're going to substitute it into the other partial derivative. So we substitute into the partial derivative of x set equal to 0. So we have nothing. We can't do it. We're stuck, which is fine. That doesn't mean give up. It just means we can't plug that in. It typically indicates that there's only going to be one critical point. So when this happens... Don't give up, just go ahead and start solving. The other equation, that partial derivative with respect to x, set equal to zero, solve for x. So I have x cubed minus one set equal to zero, 
And solving for x, here again we have x cubed is equal to 1. Taking the cube root of both sides, we are left with x is 1. Right, so when you have a case like this where there's only one y and there's only one x, we have a single critical point at the ordered pair x, y, where x is 1 and y is 2. And again, this is a potential extrema point. In order to classify it as an extrema, we need to apply our second derivative test. And here we go. So we are ready to apply the second derivative test. So we want to keep in mind here that we are going to need to use the discriminant. Our discriminant is defined as d of x, y being equal to the second partial derivative of x with respect to x evaluated at x, y multiplied by the second order partial of y with respect to y evaluated at x, y minus the mixed second order partial at the ordered pair x, y squared. And the point that we are testing is the ordered pair 1, 2. So let's evaluate our second order partials at this point. So we have the second derivative of x with respect to x at the point 1, 2. So that was 12 multiplied by 1 cubed. And we don't have to go all the way here. As soon as you recognize, hey, that is positive. We're good. We can stop. Same thing with the second order partial of y with respect to y. Right, as soon as you realize, you don't even have to go this far. If you want to go all the way just to confirm, that's fine too. But again, as soon as you realize it's either positive or negative, you can stop. And then we also had the mixed order partial, which doesn't really matter here. No matter what the order pair is, it's always zero. So we're now ready to go ahead and substitute these into our discriminant. So you have the discriminant at the ordered pair 1, 2 is going to be a positive number multiplied by another positive number minus 0 squared. We can see that our discriminant here is positive. So we're able to make our conclusions. We can see that our discriminant is a positive value and we can see that our second derivative of x with respect to x is also positive. So thinking back to the cases we can say well therefore since the discriminant at the order pair 1 2 is greater than 0 and the second derivative at this ordered pair 1 2 is greater than 0 and let's suppose we're thinking, oh my goodness, I forgot the conditions of the test. We can say, all right, well, if this was in two dimensions, think about concavity. If it's positive, it's concave up. Like a smile. Right, so that shows us that this is going to be a local minima. So you can say that F has a local minima at the point one, two. And that is our beautiful final answer here. We have classified the potential critical point as in extrema, specifically a local min.